Bill, can somebody shout praise the Lord? Praise Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Praise God. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. You got your swords with you this morning. Amen. I got a couple people got their battle swords with them, got their weapons. Amen. Don't never go to war without a weapon. Praise God. Psalms chapter number 37. I believe this morning beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lord has a word for this people, for this house, for this hour. Amen. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Well, we're going to just jump right into it this morning. Psalms 37. I'll have a good bit of reading, but we probably won't go over all of it. Just, uh, but I do want to read through it. Psalms 37. This is be a familiar passage of Scripture to most of you in here, probably. But uh, you'll see when we get through there. Psalms 37, starting in verse number 1. When you find a place, if you can, we'll stand for the reading of God's Word. Then I'll let you be back seated. Psalms 37, verse number 1. The Bible says these words, Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look in diligently for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and they gnash at him with his teeth. And the Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and they have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. To slay those who are of upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart. And their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has. Is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright. And their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine they shall be satisfied, but the wicked shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish. Into the smoke they shall vanish away. Let me go down to verse 23. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his deceived or his descendants begging for bread. He is ever merciful in lends, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and he does not forsake his saints. Can anybody say amen right there? Amen. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom. And his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. And none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. And the Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you 
to inherit the land. I'm going to stop right there and pray now. Father, one more time we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what we felt already. God, we thank you for what you are doing. God, we thank you for what you are about to do. Lord, we thank you for the reading of this word. We thank you for your love letter to us, God. Lord, without it, we would be lost. But Lord, with it, this is your road not back to heaven. God, I thank you for the riches, Lord, the unending riches. Lord, the depth, the deepness that is in this word. And God, I pray today that you would give us spiritual understanding to understand what you are speaking to your church. Lord God, help us to, to preach this gospel with the anointing and with boldness and clarity. Lord God, hide us behind your cross and let nothing but Jesus shine. Anoint the ears to hear what you are saying. We promise to give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Would you give the Lord a praise while you're being seated? Praise God. Well, I come to talk to you just for a few moments of your time. I promise ain't going to hold you that long. You hear me say that all the time, though. I hear a lot of people laughing. Y'all think that's funny. Uh -huh. That's right. Amen. So, uh, anyways, I don't know how long I'm going to hold you, but I'm trying not to hold you that long anyways. But I come to talk to you for a few moments of your time anyways. Because we are living in a day and age where you and I, I understand, uh, we, we live in the same world. Amen? And we must understand something. We are God's people. Can I get a witness? We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We have made heaven our home. We understand we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We have made heaven our home, so we are of another kingdom. Praise God. We are kingdom family, but we are still living in this world. The, we used to sing this old song called This world is not our home Or it went like this This world is not our home I'm only passing through Does anybody know what I'm talking about? This world is not my home I'm only passing through In other words I, I, I can't feel at home in this world anymore <laughs> Woo, Mighty God Why can't I feel at home in this world anymore? Because the things that this world loves And pushes nowadays Is so against uh, what the people of God And what the Father up above loves And what the people of God cherish and, and hold true There is no morals any longer in the land The, the morals in, in the land And the, the values and, and truth is falling in the streets We have seen this week alone Where a former president And y'all may not I'm not trying to get all political in here But where they have found mm, Justice has fallen in the streets and there is so much evil that is going on in the land. It is so messed up and so corrupt and moral and justice and things are falling all because people don't like a certain way. They're able to do something and crucify somebody just because they don't like what you stand for. I can stand for that. Just because I don't like what you stand for, that don't mean I'm going to crucify you and throw you in prison and do all. Just because I don't like it, I'm going to pray for you. Now, now let me tell you something here. The Bible says, when I was reading the other day in the, in the scriptures, that this verse popped out to me because in the world that we're living in. Well, I must make it very clear. I've told y'all this many times before. I've had to turn the news off at my house because if I ever turn the news on, it makes my blood begin to boil. I can't watch the news anymore. I have to only pick and choose what I read on my phone about certain news outlets, and I have to choose them very wisely because if you don't, it, it will cause you to, to almost lose your religion. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Let's be real in here this morning. I, I'm not coming up here to pull your leg and try to act all holier than thou. I'm just trying to tell you we're living in a real world where the enemy is at work in this world. And, and if you ain't careful, the thing 
things that are going on in this world will cause you to lose your mind and cause you to lose your grip and it will cause you to get angry and it will cause you to begin to get bitter and it will cause you to begin to have seeds of anger to begin to rise up on the inside of you and before long you'll begin to say things that you didn't mean to say. Oh, come on now. Things will begin to rise up and bitterness and anger and all this stuff begins to rise up and before long you say things that, that, that a child of God shouldn't say. Come on, somebody. Let's, let's just be truthful about this. And, and before long you're, you're, you're talking about people and, and all this. And, and before long we're, we're almost just about as bad as the other side. Two wrongs don't make a right now. I'm just trying to be truthful. But I read in the scripture this week, and I've read it before, and, and I feel the peace of the Holy Ghost right now coming all over me. And so I feel like I'm in the right neighborhood, and I feel like I'm, I, I'm where I'm supposed to be this morning. And the power of God hit me. When I read Psalms 37, it, it's talking about we are able to rest in the Lord. And, and he said, number one, do not fret because of evildoers. The very first thing he said, don't fret because of evildoers. Who's evildoer? God, come here and talk to y'all for this a little bit. Hallelujah. Don't fret. What does fret mean? Fret means to sit there and chew your nails because you don't like what's going on in the land. Because you don't like what's going on in the government. Because you don't like what's going on in the city, in the in the county, in, in other area. In, in, not just in government, but in life in general. But God is saying, you ain't got to worry because there's a kingdom that's above every kingdom. There's a kingdom that's above the White House. There's a kingdom that's above the courthouse. There's a kingdom that's above the judicial system. That's above the Supreme Court. My God, the heavenly courts in heaven. Praise God. He said, you ain't got a fret. You ain't got a word. Who are you trusting in? Whose faith are you putting? Who are you putting your faith in? Some trust in horses and some in chariots, but I will trust in the Lord my God. Amen. Is that not what David said? David said, Some trust in men, some trust in horses and chariots, but I will trust in the name of the Lord God. Amen. I can remember when David went up against Goliath, and David, or Goliath, had the sword. Goliath had the, the spear, and he had the guy out in front of him that even had the big old shield. And here comes little bitty teenage David, and he didn't have nothing. He had a little bitty, little bitty sling. Oh, hold on just a minute. Time out. I'll be right back. Y'all still hear me? Yeah. Look here. Praise God. Here's what David had. There's a giant out there, nine foot tall, six inches, that had all this armor on, that had another man out there with a big old shield. And Goliath, who was a trained marksman, and he had a sword that little David barely could even pick up that probably weighed 200 pounds. And this guy was a professional killer. He was a hit man. And David was a teenage shepherd boy. Little bitty boy. But he had a little pouch. He had a little pouch like this. And he stopped at the brook. And he picked up a little smooth stone. He picked up five of them. Because one was... For Goliath, and Goliath had four brothers. Oh my God. Not because he had doubt or fear, but because he knew that he had four other brothers that had to be took down also. But he wouldn't threaten. He wouldn't worry about evildoers. He wouldn't turn on Fox or CNN or MSNBC. 
see uh, in chewing his fingernails because there was somebody out there cussing their God and cussing and running down their God, running down their church, running down their religion. No, he said, I'm going to do something about this uncircumcised Philistine. I'm going to battle. When nobody else is going to do anything, I'm going to do something. Where's the army? Is there not a cause? While the army's over there in the corner, their armor is clinking and clattering, and they're hiding out in the foxhole. David said, I'm not going to be scared. I remember who my God is. They tried to put armor on him, but he didn't need it. He looked at Goliath. Goliath said, what you do? Send me a dog out here. And he starts laughing at little Goliath. He starts laughing at him. He said, I told you to send me out a warrior. He didn't know this was a warrior. You see, it don't matter what you look like. It matters. Is God on the inside of you? Are you anointed? <laughs> the anointing is what matters. It don't matter how tall you are, how short you are, how big you are, how little you are. What matters is do you have the anointing of God on your life? <laughs> What matters is do you know him? Greater is he who is in you than he that is in this world. David said, I know him and the power. Hallelujah. He said this a year or so ago. I was watching my daddy's sheep. Y'all know that story. And I took out a lion with my bare hand. And a few months later, bear come. So David, he said, Goliath, you got a big mouth. Now I'm paraphrasing now. I'm using Walker County terms. Clive, you got a big old mouth. You talk real big. He said, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord God. He said, and today, today, Clive, your head is coming off. I'm not worried about how tall you are. I'm not worried. Goliath's out there talking about how many men he's killed. He's talking about how big and how bad he is. Let me tell you something. Our government's talking about how big and how bad they are. Our, our, my Lord, the world's talking about how big and how bad they are. The, the system that we're living in today wants to put fear into you. And they want you to think that they have more power than they have. But I've got something to tell the children of God. No, my Lord, they have no power over Jehovah. You serve the living God. You serve the Lord God who created this thing. I said he spoke this world into existence. And you don't have to fret. He picked you up a smooth stone and begin to sling that thing. Those giants are coming down. Hallelujah. All you got to do is begin to believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Don't fear. Don't fret. Hallelujah. We ain't got to worry. We ain't got to worry. Don't fret because of evildoers. David said, you come to me. You got a big old mouth. He said, but God, today, your head's coming off. Today, your head's going to come off, big boy. And not only is it going to come off, but I'm going to take your sword from you. And I'm going to use your own sword to chop your head off. The weapons that the enemy has been trying to use against you and against the people of God is going to be the same weapons that God will use to turn around and use on their own head. What are you saying, Brother Chad? I'm saying that God is able to make the things that the world is trying to do to push down the church and push down God's plan. God is able to make it blow up and backfire in their face and it will... You have nothing to fear. They will only get so far before God says enough is enough. They can only go as far as God says they can go. When God says enough, they can't go no further. And we may see things. God's word said it's going to get rough. In the last days, perilous times, just dangerous times shall come. Men will be lovers of their own selves. 
Hetty, highlighted, boasters, proud, disobedient to parents, truce breakers, all kinds of things. Uh, oh, it is that way now. Yes, there's so many. Second Timothy chapter 3 gives you a list of things that the last day's generation is going to be full of. And it is that way now. And it's going to be bad. And times are going to get tough. And times are going to get rough. But it's when those times get tough. It's when the true people of God begin to shine forth the most. Amen. Hear me now. It shows who the true remnant is. Because when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Oh, I heard come two or three. I heard two or three shout amen. The rest of them said, oh me. The rest of them, if you can't say amen, say ouch. Praise the Lord. I said when the going gets tough, the tough get going. I said we're about to have to endure. The Bible said that we must endure to the end. But they didn't say that you're going to be on a bed of roses. We're not on a no home. We're not on a cruise ship. We're on a battleship. We are fighting a war. We are in warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. we got to get it through our head. We're not meant to sit back and drink pina coladas and take it easy. We're meant to go to battle. Hallelujah. We're meant to hit our knees and begin to go to war and chop the head of the demonic off. Go against the go against the kingdom of darkness and snatch those out of hell. But we're not to fret and worry. And you see a lot of this is smoke and mirrors. A lot of this stuff that you see in the news today. Can I say something? Now a lot of you may disagree with me and that's okay. And I, I probably shouldn't even say this, but y'all know me. I just I have no filter sometimes. That bridge that got struck by that ship the other day, you can't make me believe that that was some kind of accident. You can't make me believe that that was some kind of accident. While that bridge was being hit and come down, there was something else that was being done behind the scenes to get your attention on that bridge. All this stuff is being done to get your attention off of what's happening elsewhere. That's it. It's smoke screens. Stuff is happening behind the scenes. And they'll, they'll, they'll pull these things, pull these strings so that you're looking over here while they're pulling laws and making laws and doing these things over here. Deception at its finest. That's the way the enemy works. The enemy is subtle. The Bible said in Genesis, now the enemy is more subtle than any other creature in the garden. Woo! Uh, but I come to tell you, you still don't have to fret the cause of evildoers. Hallelujah. Because even though he's more subtle, Jesus said, you are still not ignorant of the devil's devices. You have something called uh, the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Uh, that the Bible said, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, uh, that the Bible said that he will convict you uh, of all things. He will begin to nudge you and tell you and reveal to you and show you uh, what the actual agenda is, what is going on, what the MO is. God will show you exactly what's going on. You don't have to fret or worry or fear. God is on your side. And you are on the winning side. If you stay on team Jesus, you are on the winning side. Amen. We're on Jesus' team. Amen. Yeah. And you're on the winning side. Don't fret because of evil doing. Right. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. I ain't even got out of the first sentence on this issue. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Praise God. Here's another thing. A lot of times we get so caught up and we say, you know, these people that are actually puppets in today's world that are doing evil things. Number one, our president. But yeah. 
Ah, uh, got one, amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number one, a fresh dead. And number two, we've got several others. Amen. Taylor Swift. Amen. She's a puppet of the devil. Yep. Witchcraft. Yep. So much of that mess that's going on. Yep. Oh, my it's just so much. But you know, we look at these folks and we're like, how in the world? Is are they still just going around with a smile on their face? And, and how does people not see right through them? Is, is that not what people think? Are are we the only one that thinks that? Or, or, or surely to God, how does people not see right through these fake people? And we begin to wonder, is, is there more people like this? Uh, and what's going on? And, and you begin to think, my God, is there more deceived or, or what in the world? And we begin to question, how many people in our world is really like this? And Sonia, she, she pulled up some kind of video yesterday that she showed me where, where there was so many. It is over and over and over and over and over. There were so many of them. They just kept bashing certain ones and, and kept saying, oh, no, we're not voting for them. We're voting the other way. And I'm like, how can somebody think this way? How can somebody think this way? And it's so just mind-blowing to me. And, and I got to thinking about it. And I got to wonder, my Lord, how in the world can somebody be so twisted? And he said, it's because, it's because my church has been so quiet. Because they don't want to get political. They say, don't bring politics to the church. Don't say anything about politics. Let me tell you something to this morning, church. If we don't say something about politics in church, you won't have a church. That there is a party that does not want Jesus in this country. You must understand that. There is a party today that does not love Jesus. They love Satan. They are run by Satan. And they do not want church. They do not want Jesus. And we must not allow it. They're for abortion. They're for murder. They're for all these evil things. And I'm telling you today, we must not allow it. Now, I'm not trying to preach politics, but I'm trying to tell you, you must see through the evil that these folks are pushing. You've got to. You've got to. That's it. We've got to wake up. That's it. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. They're so afraid that he's giving the country back to the people. And that says scares, scares them to death. And this country was for the people, by the people. That's it. Exactly. But you know what? One nation under God. One nation under God. I believe Brother Rick said something about that Sunday morning. And, and we're losing that right now. We're losing that under God. And we really, we've really got to stand for that so much. We must stand for that under God. Don't, they're trying to, and I don't know if you've noticed it. And, and you said it wasn't our currency. But if you will notice from the old quarters to the new quarters, the under God used to be in front where George Washington was looking at God. But now they took God and they put it behind him to where George Washington has turned his back on God. Look at the old quarters and look at the new quarters. And they've done that deliberately. Nancy Pelosi went through every courthouse, and I'm not trying to get off on all this. I'm getting back to the Bible. But went through every courthouse, every house on the U.S. soil and took down every in God we trust sign on U.S. government soil. Think about this. It's evil. Yeah. It's evil. Yeah. I know you said you should talk about this, but I want to thank you for talking about this because that's why the church is quiet. That's why 
people in the church don't know about it. That's it. Because we have gotten quiet. That's it. We're not talking about it. That's we it. Need to. That's it. We do. We definitely. Yeah. We definitely. We got to bring awareness. Exactly. We've got to bring awareness. That's it. That's it. And, and let me say this. A man is not going to save this country. God's the one that's going to save the country. But we must go. We must do our due diligence. And we must go. And we don't vote for party. We vote for morals and values. We vote for the best person. And we vote by the one that stands the closest to this word right here. That's it. And that's it. And if you do that, you know. And the Bible says, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and they shall wither as the green herb. So let me tell you, right here is a promise of God's word. Amen. What does the Bible say about God's promises? The Bible says that God's promises are yes and amen. Yes and amen. So that tells me something right there. That all of God's promises, every promise that's in this Bible right here, will come to pass. The Bible says that all of God's words, not one of them will hit the ground void. Amen? Not one of them. So that tells me something. I don't have to fret because of the men and the evil and the corrupt system that's going on in our world because everyone that has a part in it right now, the Bible said that just like I crank my lawnmower out there and I run over that grass and chop it down, the Bible said there's a day coming uh, that they're going to wither like the grass. Uh, there's, God's got a lawnmower. Praise the Lord. And he's going to... Chop those babies down. They're going down like the grass in the field. They shall wither as the green herb. And so there's an expiration date. They shall not be forever. And there's a place in Psalms that the Bible said that we can pray the prayer. This is the prayer. The prayer says this. Lord, let their days be few and another rise up and take their place. If you want to pray for your leaders that's there now, go ahead and you can pray that prayer. Lord, let their days be few and another rise up and take their place. And it says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. But here's, the, here's what we need to do. Trust in the Lord. There's, there's what we need right there. Every bit of it. Trust the Lord. There's the whole secret, the, the very recipe to it all. Trust the Lord. He is who he will make America great again. It's Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus. Make America godly again. It's Jesus. We've got to put him first. Trust to the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. This tells me something right here. Praise God that I can trust in the Lord and in the power of his might. And even though my government's gone crazy, I can still dwell in this land and I can dwell in his faithfulness. Yeah. My government might have deserted me. They might have deserted our morals and our values. And they might have deserted our constitution. But I got a king. Amen of another kingdom. And he is faithful. He's never my God. I'm not on the uh, Obama economy. I'm not on the Biden economy. I'm on the Jesus economy. Praise God. I'm on that economy. And Deuteronomy 28 says, I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. It says I'll be the lender, not the borrower. Yeah. Woo, mighty God. I thank God I'm on that economy. Praise the Lord. And that's only if we obey the commands. I wanted to preach that this morning. But God said, no. Psalms 37 is the word for today. So maybe next week. But he said, trust in the Lord. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Man, I love that right there. Delight yourself also in the Lord. What does that mean? Delight yourself in the Lord. You know, there's so many people in this world today, Brother Chris, that they're so ashamed to tell somebody that they, they, they're Jesus followers. They're Christians. 
They're so afraid. When they get around their friends or their peers, they're so afraid to say, I'm a Christian. They just want to fit in. They want to blend in with the rest of the world. And they just want to keep their mouth shut and they don't want to say nothing because they don't want to stir up nothing. They just said rather just fit in with everybody else and, and, and not say anything unless something's asked. But I'm coming to tell you today, there's a time where you must open up your mouth and delight yourself in the Lord. You need to make it known I'm a child of God. If you don't like it, tough to you. I, the Lord is my Lord. He is my God. He has saved me. He has pulled me out of the devil's hell. He saved my life when I was headed straight for hell. He pulled me out of the devil's hell. My God, he died for me. And the most I can do, the least I can do, is tell somebody else about him. I look how he pulled me out of the miry clay. How he broke the chains of addiction out of my life. How he saved me. How he picked me up. Turned me around and put my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah. How he gave me a new song in my heart. How he gave me a dance in my step. Praise the Lord how he makes me want to worship uh, every time. Uh, praise God that I hear his name called. Uh, I want to shout uh, to the top of my lungs uh, when somebody says, Jesus. I want to shout, Jesus. I see you do it too. Uh, amen. There's something about that name uh, that just does something to a child of God. And that's why he said, delight yourself in the Lord because there's too many people today that are so ashamed that they want to hide. They, they, they're, they're, they're unopen about, I'll tell you who they are. <coughs> about 20 years ago, the LBG, LGBT, ABCDEFG group, <laughs> they used to not be out in the, they used to be called in the closet. And a lot of Christians today, when the LGBTQ come out of the closet, the Christians went in. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. That's true. When they come out, the Christians went in. They swapped roles. And they said, well, now, now that they're out, I, I don't, I don't want to be labeled a homophobe. I don't want to be labeled a bigot. I don't want to be labeled a racist. I don't want to be labeled this. Let me tell you something. You're going to be labeled everything. Yeah. And in these last days, it's going to happen more and more and more. Yeah. It's going to be labeled more and more and more. But that's where the tough get going. That's where the true remnant rises up. And you stand against all the fiery darts of the enemy. There is truth. And the truth shall set you free. You know... And God knows your heart. And people trying to mix the truth. There is but one truth, and that's absolute truth. There is not many truths. There is but one truth. We've talked about this over and over. Delight yourself in the Lord. Don't you dare let somebody steal your delightness in the Lord. Don't you let somebody hide that, your great pleasure in Jesus. You share that with everybody around you. Don't be ashamed to be a child of God. That's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To the Jew first and then also to the Greek. He said, the Lord yourself in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart. What is that, Brother Chad? Well, it doesn't mean he's going to give me a Ferrari. No, it don't mean he's going to give you a Ferrari. Praise the Lord. It means, hallelujah, Brother Chris, I know that hurts our feelings. I want one too. But praise God. It means if your will lines up with his will, when your will lines up with his will, then it will be done. When your will and his will lines up, then it will. Your will, His will, it will be done. Hear me somebody. Your will and His will, it will be done. We got to make sure we're lining up with His will. Amen. Then it shall come to pass. Praise the Lord. Commit your way. I'm going to finish up this morning with this verse. 
Commit your way. We're going to have to go through this. It may take a few more weeks to go through this. Commit your way to the Lord and trust also in Him and He shall bring it to pass. I love this right here. If you commit to the Lord, Praise God. If you commit and trust in Him, He's going to bring it to pass. That word commit right there is exactly what we were talking about Wednesday night. Committing to something. We've got so many people that commit to different things. Man, they'll commit to they'll commit to people, they'll commit to jobs, they'll commit to different things. But when it comes to committing to the Lord, when it comes to committing to Jesus, my goodness. When it comes to committing to church. Woo. And I'm, I must say this. Your love for God's house shows your love for God. You can't love God if you don't love God's house. That's scripture. That ain't going to tell you. That's scripture. But your love for God shows your love for God's house. Your love for God's house shows your love for God. Amen. By the way, you show up for God's house. He does. He shows. And so anyways, the Bible says right there, commit your way. Commit. We have so many people that want to commit to different things. And they'll talk about it. They'll talk a lot about doing it. But when it comes down to it, we have a lot of hot air. Hot air. Listen. There used to be a time when people, Sonia, come here just a minute, please. Are you busy? No, yeah. <laughs> you have a lot of notes, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Shake my hand. There used to be a time when people, when they took your hand like that and shook hands and they give you their word, that was a promise. That meant something. That was a commitment. And if your word and your handshake, if you didn't live up to that, you was no good. You was labeled as no good, dirty, rotten scoundrel across the county. Your word and your handshake was your bond. That was your commitment. Now listen, when we make a commitment, but definitely when we make one to the Lord, we need to keep it. And I will say this, don't don't make a commitment if you're not going to keep it. Don't. Please don't. And don't make one that you don't know if you can keep or not. The Bible says we don't know what should happen tomorrow. we got enough problems for today. You know, don't make a whole bunch of plans and tell somebody, hey, I'll be there three weeks from now. We don't know what's going to happen in three weeks. You know, just tell them, if the Lord wills, we'll be there. If the Lord wills. But if you make a commitment to the Lord, make sure you hold up to your end of the deal. Make sure. Because commitments to the Lord is a covenant. It's not just a word you spoke. God's word and your word to God is covenant. It's not just like saying, hey, Sonia, I'll wash clothes after a while. And they go home and forget Sonia, you know what she'll do? She probably slapped me inside the back of the head and said, I thought she was going to wash clothes. <laughs> but with God, see, God's not going to slap me inside the back of the head, but with God, he's, he's holding me to that because I spoke a word, and words to God is covenant. It's the power of life and death. And so I've made a covenant to God that I told him I'm going to do something, and now I've let God down. I've not only broken covenant, I've lied to God. And you see how dangerous this gets? So if you make a commitment with God, make sure you hold up your end of the bargain. But commit your way to the Bible so we can commit to Him. Commit to the Lord. And that means that you can trust whatever it is. You can trust it to the Lord. Let me finish up. You can stay with me. I'm done for today. Praise God. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him. And He shall bring it to pass. Is there anything you need to be brought to pass? 
I know what I need to be brought to pass. Hallelujah. I need this country to be turned back around to God. I need my family to be turned back around to God. I need some things to be worked around for the good. I need the Lord to show up in some areas in our lives, in our family. I need God to move. And the Bible says if I commit myself to the Lord and I trust in Him, that those things will happen. And so you know what? Today, I'm committing it. I'm laying it in His hands. I'm committing those things. I'm already committed to the Lord. But I'm committing those things. I'm going to quit fretting about them. I'm going to quit worrying about them. And I'm committing them to the Lord and I'm trusting Him from this day forward. Lord, I don't know what day it's going to be, but I'm believing. You're going to work it out. You're going to bring it to pass. Those family members I've been praying for, those loved ones, this nation, this crazy election, everything we got going on right now, Lord, what has happened, you're going to straighten it out. Lord, only you can do it. We got a messed up world that we're living in. But God, you are able. God, you are able. And Lord, over this congregation right now, Lord, we trust you. Lord, there's several out right now that are sick. Some that, Lord, been diagnosed with cancer. God, we commit that to you right now. We trust you, Lord, that you are able, Lord, to turn it around, to heal them up, Lord. God, to take that thing away in the name of Jesus. Pneumonia. We speak to that right now. It must go in Jesus' name. We believe. These surgeries that are coming up, God, we speak to that. Lord, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Lord, go before these right now. We commit them to you. Lord, that your hand be upon them and all will go smooth and go well in Jesus' name. We trust in you, God. We commit them to you. Lord, we pray that you'll work all things out for the good for them that love you. God, we thank you right now. Lord, any family members, any children right now, we call them home. We commit them to you, God, into your care. God, put them in your hand and bring them back in Jesus' name. Lord, we trust in you. God, all other needs right now, we commit it to you. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. God, touch each one of these people, Lord, under the sound of my voice right now. God, whatever the need may be, we commit to you. And we ask you to move upon it. Right now, Lord, we thank you. In the mighty name above all names, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Is there any needs in the house? If you can, you can stand with us if you're able.